Hey guys, it's LBS Honey and welcome back to a new video. You may be asking yourself, Honey, why do you have a whole army of new LPS behind you? And well, take a look at this blind bag pet. Does anything look different to you about him? I anything at all? Okay, let me put him side by side with his original image. Yes, if you didn't notice, I gave this guy a slight little makeover repaint and added some details which weren't originally part of his design. Now don't get me wrong, I loved the original design. I even said that in my unboxing video that the cool icy blue that they used was really pretty, but what really bugged me about his design was he was lacking a nose. So I took it upon myself to do a few little repaint retouches with his nose, tusks, and mouth area, and I posted on my Instagram asking you guys if you wanted to see me repaint a bunch of the new blind box pets, and the answer was an overwhelming yes. So today we're going to be taking all these pets here and giving them a new little design. Now I just want to add a disclaimer that just because I'm painting these pets doesn't mean I don't like their original designs. I think a lot of people are very quick to criticize these pets for not having super detailed colors. But I think it's important to remember that they are blind box pets and historically blind box LPS have been very basic. For example, this is a blind box G2 short hair cat and the only color on it besides its eyes is its mouth and ears. So it is pretty normal for them to lack a lot of detail because they are on the cheaper end. But that doesn't mean I can't take my own ones and add some more details to make them look more appealing to me. I won't be customizing every single blind box pet because ones like the panda and poodle look great in my opinion and don't need any work. But pets like this lioness for example are lacking a lot of color especially on the body and I want to do something about that. For anyone curious I will be using these items here to do my customizing and there will also be a list of the specific like brands and stuff of paints that I use in the description down below so if you want to do this yourself you can go check out what I used below. Let's get started with these pets. A couple of them are only going to need some small changes and other ones are getting a whole new look. A quick little message before we get into today's video is that it is currently insanely hot in Australia. We're reaching super high degrees, like I can't even sit in my room for long recording without breaking out in insane sweat. So I'm going to be breaking this video up into two parts. Because we have 10 pets to paint, I'm going to be painting 5 pets this video and 5 pets in my next video. I'd obviously love to put them in one video, but I don't want to pass out painting these pets in my room. So I'm only going to be doing 5 of them today. To make each video unique, I'm going to be doing two types of repaints. This video's repaints are going to be pretty basic repaints that anyone can do. And part two's repaints are going to be more complex with different designs, things like sparkles and just overall body repaints. So I do apologize for splitting these videos into two but I do hope you guys can understand. Okay, let's get started painting. Let's start off with three pets that are probably getting the smallest changes done to them, and that's the shark, corgi, and bunny rabbit. So yes, I know I defended this little guy in my last video because I do like how he looks, but I think we can all agree that his eyes and ears need a little bit of work. So like all my customs, I'm using acrylic paint, and we're starting off with the corgi. I first of all wanted to color match her little paw pads to her nose and I managed to get pretty close using pink and orange. Here's how she looked after two coats. I then went in and wanted to change the position of her eye, little shine pupil things, because they're looking in two different directions. The right side covered up straight away, but the left side did need two coats. But don't worry, I did two coats on both eyes, so they're evened out. I also covered up the small little shine on the right side and this is when I noticed that she had bottom front paw pads so I decided to paint them as well. Even though you don't see them, they're still outlined and just like so ready to paint so I just had to. 
Then I went in with a teeny tiny nail art brush to make a little dot on the side to match the left eye. I then went in with my dotting tool and I absolutely hate this step because I have such shaky hands, but I managed to pull it off pretty much first go. And here is our corgi design. It's a pretty simple repaint, but the little details really add a lot to it, and I think it looks super adorable. Moving on to our shark, I pretty much just wanted to give this guy gills and repaint a little part that was missing on the teeth. The teeth were straightforward, mainly because it was a printing error, and for the gills, I decided to do a dark aqua. This took me quite a few coats because this specific aqua color is very like thin so you really have to build it up but it's not that much of a worry if you're just doing little details like this. After a few coats it was definitely looking a lot better. Then on to our bunny. His ears were super hard to paint on but after spraying it with a priming spray, I was able to paint acrylic paint on top. So if you have any trouble painting on these new pets plastic, definitely try spraying it with a matte priming spray beforehand because that will help the paint stick. And trust me, painting white on any color is going to take multiple coats. So his ears took a lot of paint because I did thin coats to avoid streakiness. And oh boy, here's one coat, two coats, and three coats. And you can see we're hardly making any progress. So I moved on to doing the eyes in between the ear coats as well, because his eyes were looking in the same direction, but one was higher than the other. So I wanted to bring them down to the same level, and I think it turned out pretty good. Moving on to our Bull and Clydesdale, these two I mainly wanted to repaint the hooves. Once again, color matching as best I could to the hair and tail. I did this by mixing brown, red, and a little bit of purple. I went over the hooves about two times, so it only took two coats because it is quite a dark paint. As for the bull, I also wanted to paint his hooves to match his hair. I made this color by using brown, red, and a bit of orange. Also, I don't show it on camera, but I painted a little bit of the white in his eyes just to cover up some of the graininess that I had found on my print. As for his hooves though, it took me about three coats. Welcome back to my regular filming spot and let's take a look at our five finished repaints. Also a quick little disclaimer, none of these pets have been sealed yet so don't worry I will be sealing the paint which will give it a much smoother finish but for now let's take a look at them repainted. So first up is our Corgi, I love how this one turned out, it's probably my favorite out of the five I painted today. I think the little peachy paws and nose match so well together and the fact that they even have little circles at the bottom for the two front paws as well is so cute and I knew I had to fill them in. I also really like how her eyes turned out being able to rearrange the little pupil dots to be kind of more in the center rather than one in the center and one going off to the side I think looks a lot more cohesive. Here's a little before and after side by side comparison for you guys and I, I definitely prefer the after. Obviously you don't have to agree but I really think adding these small details and changing the position of the eyes really made this corgi pop. Next up is our shark and I really didn't change a lot on this guy. I just wanted to give him some little gills and also fill in some paint on his teeth that was misprinted on mine specifically. So this one isn't the biggest repaint but it's a cute little detail that I really like how it looks. Here's a little side by side between the original design. It doesn't add a huge amount but I really do like this aqua color and I think just gills on sharks in general look really cute. Here's an old G2 pet that has gills and I think we can all agree that it's just a cool little detail that they didn't have to paint on but when they did it's just 
cool. So I'm happy with mine. Then we have a blue and white bunny and this guy took so much freaking layers of white paint on his ears. Thin layers, thankfully, so they don't look too bad. But I'm really happy with how he turned out. I think the white in the ears really does give it more depth. And I'm not sure if you guys can notice, but I did rearrange the eye pupils just slightly. It's more down on the left side now, whereas the original design, his left eye was up higher than the right one. I don't know why they did this, but I do prefer it being on the same level like this now. And of course, I've said this before this pet was even released, he definitely needed the white in the ears, so I really think he looks completed now. Then we have our Clydesdale horse. I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. I think the fuzzy little toesies down the bottom definitely add just that bit more color and bring it all together. Obviously, you can add some white into the actual hoof part if you want, but I kind of just like the overall brown look with the hair, the tail, and the feet all matching. In general, this pet's also very shiny, so the brown that I chose actually matches it really well. So for anyone curious, here is the other side with the little heart markings, and just look how nicely it all flows together now. Ugh. And then lastly, we have our bull. I was actually tempted to do a bit more detail on this guy, but I did want to keep him as a basic repaint just to show you guys how much a little can go a long way. And for this guy, much like the Clydesdale, it was his feet that I changed. I painted it to match his hair and here is a before and after. It's much more reminiscent now to the original bull mold that was made and I really love that. It still does look different because the colors are different and the horns are different, but the feet definitely bring the whole design together more. I'm not sure how well it's showing off on camera, but I did also fill in some of the graininess that was at the bottom of the eyes, which I mentioned in my original unboxing video of these pets. Stuff like that is specific to a pet that I got because it's a misprint, not an actual part of the design but I still wanted to mention that I did fill it in and it does help. I know a lot of people are concerned with graininess and the bull was the only one that I could really notice it on so you definitely can just paint over it slightly and fill it in. If I was to give him more detail I might add some highlights in his hair but things like his tail are already painted so for me the main difference that I wanted to do for this one was definitely the feet so I'm really happy that I've done that now. And then of course I didn't paint him in this video but the walrus as well because he is a repaint that I did uh, pretty much for Instagram. <laughs> Here are the five basic repaints I did today. Let me know what you guys think of them in the comments down below and if you've been able to get the blind box pets have you yourself repainted any of them? I know a lot of people have been discussing online how they could use a bit more detail and it'll be cool to see the community customize their pets more. Hopefully with this video I kind of inspired some of you guys to try out some of the enhanced designs, I guess, for these new blind box pets. And I do really want to apologize that I'm not painting all 10 pets in this video, but I am literally like burning up behind the camera. I feel like I am just going to melt away at any second. And because the next five pets are ranging from medium to full on repaints, I definitely want to like do a good job and not be sweating like crazy behind the camera and having to stop and start. So just know in part two when I repaint these five pets, I'm going to go all out and make them look as good as possible while still retaining their original designs, of course, because that's what the whole repaint is about. But guys, that is everything for today's video. Like I said, let me know your favorite repaint in the comments down below. And I hope you guys are looking forward to part two, where I repaint pets like the Lioness, King Charles Spaniel, and Himalayan Cat. If any of you guys decide to repaint your pets, please do tag me on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, wherever, because I would love to see the results. But for now, that's all I have for this video. So if you enjoyed, like always, please don't forget to like, comment, and of course subscribe. And I will see you next time with another new video. Bye guys!